I became aware of a video uh, early, I think, last week uh, from Politizoid. Uh, Politizoid has uh, done uh, several videos that are w- well worth your time to watch. Uh, let me just uh, play the highlights of this one. It starts in Disneyland uh, at It's a Woke World. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to It's a Woke World. This video takes you into It's a Small World, except everything has changed inside, but it looks exactly like it. It's it's a world of privilege in boats that are cramped. Welcome to Disney's re-education camp. If If your skin is white, it's time you're contrite. It's a woke world after all. It's a world of power, a world of fears, and we work long days to make souvenirs. Although millions have died, and the Uyghurs aside, it's a woke world after all. There is a land where once you lived free as a capitalist pig of the bourgeoisie. We could eat until we are fat and we would vote Democrat if we just get past that wall. The guy who put this together would like to remain anonymous, so we're just going to refer to him uh, as a the creative director of Politizoid. He is a former Disney artist. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Appreciate it, Glenn. <laughs> you bet. How are you? I'm doing well. It, I liked your narration there. Thank you. Uh, so you must have a great job, especially since you you don't uh, you don't have to t- you don't have to take credit in the bows. You also don't have to take the hits. <laughs> well, my family's not quite ready for that yet. I think I the bet. day will come. Um, but considering I live in Los Angeles and uh, I run my own shop, so, you know, I have clients that couldn't really handle uh, the fact yeah. that I just animated that piece that you shared. Uh, but, you know, I'm tired of watching my country go down the drain and it's, it's time to do something. Um, I've been doing these cartoons for about 10 years. Um, and, you know, at times we've had funding and, and a team of 12 guys running around. Other times it's just me. It, it, just, it depends on what the opportunity, uh, you know, the opportunity that is there. But um, uh, I took about a seven-year hiatus off of doing these cartoons and jumped back in the game with uh, a piece called Shift Hits the Fan. Because mm-hmm. uh, I was getting so uh, been out of shape over the impeachment scam. And uh, kept seeing Adam Schiff coming on, you know, saying all these things that were undoubtedly, you know, false. And uh, every one of them proved uh, that he was lying. And so I, I dressed him up like Wiley Coyote, and and I put some, uh, you know, Trump hair on the Road Runner, and had him chasing <laughs> after him. And about three weeks later, the White House was sharing it. And uh, uh, so, you know, it was like, well, I guess I'm back. So since then. I've been putting out as many as I can in between client jobs, and because these um, these take quite a while to do. I mean, the piece you just played took about uh, four to five weeks to complete. So wow, um, full time. So you know, yeah, it's a heavy investment in time to do something like this. And are, are you doing it by yourself, or are there others involved in it? Um, right now, the animation was done by myself. Uh, I had uh, some friends that helped contribute some elements, some of the posters at the end, and, um, you know, like the pictures of Mao and that sort of thing. Uh, I, I, I had some help. Uh, and then uh, I had some friends that uh, brought together the, the, the chorus, because all that music was recreated. Yeah. Uh, that, none of that was pulled from any original Disney material. Right. So uh, the orchestra, everything had to be recreated uh, using synthesizers. And, uh, but I can't sing like a, a child. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so fortunately, uh, I had a friend that uh, was able to bring together um, you know, a lot of acting students and 
And, uh, and of course, the end was an adult choir. So I'm not even sure how many people went up singing it because I wasn't there. They sent me the files. Um, but without their help, I couldn't have pulled this off. I mean, if that song's not right, I mean, you want to feel like you're no, in a you... real attraction. Yeah. And I, I have to tell you, the animation is unbelievable. I mean, you worked for Disney uh, at one point yeah. as an animator. And it is, I mean, this is really, really well done. Um, what, uh, why did you take on Disney? Well, I wouldn't do what I do without Walt Disney. Um, I, I, I grew up not wanting to be an animator. I grew up wanting to be Walt Disney. Um, mm. uh, and, uh, you know, I've, I know his history. Uh, I've actually traveled to Marceline, Missouri twice and stood in front of his old offices in Kansas city. And, and of course done the tour here in L.A. multiple times of just uh, tracing his steps because um, I can't imagine what our country would be like without. Amen. I am so glad to hear you say I've been allowed to go into the archives. I've gone through his daily calendars and his diaries. Um, He's an amazing man. And I I don't know if you could say this uh, about very many people, especially in the 20th century, Imagine America without Walt Disney. It would be a radically different place. And I'm not sure we'd still be free because he put so much Americana into us, buried it deep into us as kids. Well, yes. Um, I mean, just imagine what Hollywood would be like without him. You know, there would have been no counterbalance. It's what we got now. Um, You know, I, I, I don't know how deliberate or structured the takeover was, or if it was just kind of like an opportunity that presented itself to the left, but they took care of it by overtaking Walt's company. I, I, I understand why Walt took the company public. Uh, mm-hmm. He wanted to execute his ideas, but it was the worst mistake he ever made. Uh, followed up only by him not really having a good succession plan when he died. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't. I mean, you know, he probably felt like he was immortal or so. You know, I'm yeah. not going to die. Yeah. Uh, but um, that happened much sooner than he anticipated. And um, you know, I learned what America was through watching those shorts. You know, Pecos Bill and and mm. Paul Bunyan and all those sorts of pieces. Yeah. It just gave you a sense of pride and and a connection to the people that came before us. And um, that that connection has been severed. And I know that Walt would be just, uh, I mean, that's why I put Walt at the end. I, I know you didn't get to that part, but I actually pulled no, I know. from his congressional testimony where he was talking about the communists in Hollywood. I turned that in on itself, where he is actually calling the current regime a Disney communist as a floating head in the, in the reanimation lab because the old urban legend that he was right. frozen, right. even though it was actually cremated. Well, that's what they want you to believe. He's actually uh, in the middle of the uh, African, uh, uh, what is that stupid ride called? The African jungle, the jungle ride. That's where he is. The freeways, the the freezers in the middle of the jungle, uh, the jungle cruise. Um, uh, Are there, are there more people like you than we think? Because while we don't think there are anybody, there is anybody like you. Are there more Disney people that are in that company that are just silent right now? Um, there are a uh, lot of traditional folks that are below the line in Hollywood, meaning that, you know, they're, they're the, the crafts people, the ones that actually do the work as opposed to the ones that are green lighting projects and, and um, actors commanding large salaries. Mm. And uh, they keep their head down. You know, I have a buddy that is having to, you know, direct woke stuff right now. And, and you know, I get texts going, man, this is just, it's not my scene. I hate this. And, um, you know, they, they'll share my videos around by email, you know, their personal email and give me the thumbs up. But, you know, what really needs to happen is an opportunity to start pulling those folks into a new operation that competes yeah. with Hollywood. Yes. Uh, one where they know that they're not going to be canceled and that they can feed their families and, and save their country at the same time. And if an opportunity like that you know, presents itself, then I, I think that there are tons of people in Hollywood that would jump at the chance. I will tell you, though, that conservatives just don't part with their money as easily as liberals do, especially on things like movies. Um, you know, they, they don't like the odds of success. 
And and it's interesting because when it comes to politics, it seems like the left never runs out of money. Um, but it's very difficult on the right for some reason. Well, there's a very different mindset. I mean, you know, I kind of straddle the world between entertainment and politics. And there's very, um, you know, the, the people that run the money in politics are very set in their ways. Um, and and they're able to kind of give the same sales pitch as to where the money's going to go in the ads. And, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I actually created 10 spots for the Trump campaign, but then not one of them got used. Um, and it wasn't the folks that I was working with directly. They were great. But it would go up the food chain and it would get nixed. Wow. And, Can, uh, would you be willing to share them? I'd love to see them. I actually uh, rebranded them as Politozoid, and they're on uh, they're on the YouTube channel and the Twitter. Um, all right, the ones that still made sense to release. But I mean, I would, I would, I didn't sleep all last October, and I put out uh, spots that could have come up like the day after a debate or something, and they just didn't get used. Wow. And um, it was very frustrating because it, I feel like the pieces I did could have moved the needle. They could have brought in folks that a tr- traditional campaign ad would not have reached. Um, so, it, but you know, it's, it's going to take time. Then unfortunately we don't have a lot of time, but, um, you know, I'm going to keep hammering at it and as the opportunities present themselves and I'm just going to, you know, kind of keep building. Well, I, uh, Politozoid, I have to tell you, I, I was really, really impressed with this, uh, video and, uh, I will begin to share some of your, uh, uh, some of your work as well and hope to, uh, talk to you offline as well. I, I, I think what you're doing is exactly right and i really appreciate your uh your passion uh and your willingness to risk thank you thank you appreciate it you bet bye-bye